And welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time um, we're going to be talking about Claire um, and some new things that are happening in the Claire space. And we have Luis De Los Santos and um, Hank, who is going to, Danae, who's going to be running through this presentation for us. And we'll have live Q&A at the end. So I'm going to um, let Lewis kick it off and explain um, where we're going with Claire and what's been going on. And we'll have um, Q&A in the chat while we're going through this. And we'll post this um, video up to you. All right, so take it away, Lewis. Thanks. Um, cool. So I'm going to be presenting a project uh, me and my coworker Hank have been working on called Claire Core. Uh, Claire Core is a set of Go packages which implement vulnerability scanning inside containers. Um, it is a redesign of a current application called Claire. Um, and we're going to go over a little bit of the features uh, that make it uh, basically an upgrade from the current Claire application. Uh, this is basically what we'll be discussing, Claire Core architecture, features, the timeline that we're looking at, and then contributions. Uh, so this is Claire Core architecture. Uh, we split the functionality of Claire into two Go packages called libindex and libbone. Um, libindex is responsible for concurrently scanning container layers and obtaining lists of artifacts. Right now, Claire is heavily focused on packages. Uh, right now, heavily focused on Linux packages. But as time uh, moves on, we're going to be focusing more on software packages and then other extensible causes. Um, so Libvoln now is responsible for actually taking the results of an index and now matching this to a database of vulnerability. Um, something in the background that happens in Libvon also is just keeping the vulnerability database up to date. Uh, but we don't go into that too much. Uh, it's mostly focused around just the use cases. Um, so to obtain this functionality, we have um, a data flow, uh, which exists of you providing us a manifest. Uh, manifest is really just an outline of where we can go and grab the layers uh, of your container. We scan the contents. We create an index report, which is an in intermediate structure, which tells us exactly what's in the container. Uh, and then we feed that to Libvon, which then uh, basically mm, creates like a stream of contents. And then we match that contents with known vulnerabilities. Um, so let's go into some of the features that ClareCore can offer and some of the design points uh, that kind of led us to, to this new project. Uh, one thing we wanted to do is that if you look at the workloads between indexing and actually matching vulnerabilities, they have very different performance characteristics. So it made, a log it made logical sense to kind of split those um, functionalities, uh, which also means that you can asymmetrically scale uh, whether you are an upload heavy or if you're a request heavy um, application, uh, upload being, you know, the workers which untar the layers, do a lot of heavy lifting on the file system versus the uh, read heavy, which would be you just have a ton of people who are requesting vulnerability insights based on uh, previous indexes. Uh, this also allows operations uh, engineers to distribute the application over a network, or they can run the libraries together in a single process. Um, so it's just adds a lot more flexibility. Um, Claire v2 is actually deployed like this, but it was not a first class design concept. Uh, so it was just a, it was a little bit strange to do, but now we've kind of taken that idea and we've actually split it uh, into somewhat of a microservice design. Um, Testability has been increased because now what we can do is we can test those two functionalities in isolation. We can uh, test our indexing works correctly. We can also test vulnerability matching works correctly by mocking our index reports. Uh, that was not previously uh, available to us. Uh, one of the, definitely one of the design decisions was to increase just overall testability. 
uh, content addressability. So content addressability is um, a concept where a unique identifier, normally a SHA-256 hash, uniquely identifies the contents of either a tarball, a layer, or a manifest in our case. Um, Claire V2 had concepts of layer content addressability, but never at the manifest. Uh, so we've created content addressability as a first class citizen. It's in our data model and it's core to the way Claire Core works. Um, and that helps us uh, in the next slide with a simplified data model. Uh, now that we focus on content ad addressability, the data model actually became a lot slimmer because we can use them as primary keys. Um, the data model now also has first class support for source packages, um, which is a little bit of um, a Linux package scanning um, niche knowledge. But basically, if you have a binary package, often uh, you'll want to know the source uh, that was uh, used to compile that. Uh, Claire v2 didn't have this. Uh, we built this into Claire core. Also, we have package architecture support in the data model right now, which means we can filter vulnerabilities based on system architecture. Uh, the vulnerability data consistency, uh, this basically involves us creating data consistency business logic in our vulnerability database application code. Um, in short, that just means that when we go out to a vulnerability source on day one, uh, we go and we index everything. We go out on day two, if things have been removed or if they have been changed, we now account for that. Um, in prior versions of Claire, we would just continually store uh, the different elements uh, and the advisories that came. So now we actually have consistency uh, in the vulnerability database. Standards first. Um, this is a, um, an effort of ours to basically always choose a standard type of advisory database to work with. Um, right now, Oval is something that you know, we utilize quite a bit. I think there might be other standards that will be emerging and ones that we would like to keep abreast of. We would like to always use a standard over you know, custom HTML sites that have been scraped, over GitHub that has been scraped. Uh, I think it helps bolster the standards and it helps us you know, just having structured data. Uh, extendable use cases. This is kind of something I'm really excited about. Um, you know, the models that we're working with and the, and the fact that we split, you know, indexing a container's content from vulnerabilities uh, scanning also means that we can use that indexing for different objectives, right? We can index, I think Hank had a really good idea about, you know, finding private keys that you might not actually want in the container. We might want to look for the characteristics of those files, report that in the index report, and actually show that as a vulnerable object. So we've kind of built this with extensibility in mind. Um, and another reason why we kind of split the architecture. Cool. So those, those were the main features that uh, Claire Core can kind of offer on top of previous versions of Claire. Um, so this is our timeline currently. So right now we're working on a tech preview in Quay IO slated for late January 2020. Um, that tech preview is basically where a lot of our efforts to get to V1 are really going to show because, I mean, Quay is basically going to be the load testing of the application. Uh, we're, we're moving, we're rapidly developing to V1. Uh, I'm pretty excited to get it into Quay and actually, you know, get it, um, get some volume uh, onto the services itself. Uh, and then here are some areas where we could use some help um, and kind of looking for community contributions. Anyone security focused, um, it would definitely always aid us to just know about anything emerging coming down the line. Um, anyone who is on packaging, software packaging teams, RPM, Deb, Node, 
pit. All those assets, even just for knowledge share, would be fantastic. Um, and then uh, just being in an internal Red Hat team, I think it would be a good goal for us to try to bridge the gap between our team and our internal SecOps teams. Uh, you know, to have a quick feedback loop around the way we package uh, our containers, oval uh, definitions, uh, those type of categories. So, um, yeah, I would love to see some more people like reaching out. We have a mailing list, um, and then you, the probably the easiest place to get to us is just starting a discussion um, in our Git repository. Um, so that's that's the overview of Claire Core. Um, Claire V4 will be basically an implementation of Claire Core. That's why we kind of uh, focused on Claire Core heavily. And that will be, again, slated for late January 2020 for a tech preview. So um, here are some links, Claire Core repository, the Quay project. Uh, this is my email address. This is my coworker Henry's email address. Where are the core maintainers for Claire Core right now? And then there's a link to projectquay.io. Um, that kind of wraps up. Awesome. So thanks, thanks, Lewis. That that's really amazing um, to to hear about the rearchitecting and everything. So I'm really appreciative of you guys taking the time to share this with us. Um, the only Definitely. question that, that I really have is for people who are using the um, the current Claire architecture, is there any migration issues or anything that they should be aware of or heads up um, that you, that they, if someone has already started um, and is currently using Claire um, with this new re-architecting? Yeah, I think we have to kind of spend a little bit more time to figure out a clean migration path. It is a new database schema, so it's not exactly compatible uh, with previous versions of Claire. Um, but this is something that we will have to tackle with Quay.io, so a solution will be around the corner, you know. All right, then Then we'll look forward to a, another briefing in the not-too-distant future on um, what the migration path is for folks. And, and if you're out there using Claire right now, um, we'd love um, for you to to work with us and give us feedback on this and um, we'll be pretty transparent about any um, work and effort that goes into launching it. You said that it was gonna be around the end of January or um, close to that, we're mid-January now, so that should yep. be in not too distant future too. So we'll have okay. um, both Lewis and um, Hank, Henry um, back on again, um, not, too, not too far far out from here once we um, get some feedback on how that migration went and see what the effect is of having this new architecture. Hopefully, um, the scaling and everything will be um, wonderful. So, uh, thanks again. Thank you. All right.